Chapter 10, the 10 specific types of questions asked by clients. During the real estate transaction, clients are going to have a variety of questions and they're all going to be at different stages in the process. So I want to talk about 10 types of the most commonly asked questions. The first one is going to be property specific questions. What's the square footage of the property? Can you provide me more details? So answering property specific questions involves a detailed understanding of the listed property, whether it's yours or you're working for the buyer. You guys need to be prepared to discuss the features, the layouts, any unique aspects that may appeal to the client. So I encourage you to get a deep understanding of all of these features, like the layout, all these key points. A key point to remember is to communicate the lifestyle potential of this property as well. Go beyond just the basic facts and figures of that. The second question is going to be a pricing or a market question. Well, how did you arrive at that suggested list price for my home? What's the current market trends? <clears throat> pricing and market questions require you as a practicing professional to provide insights to what's going on in that local market area right now. This includes understanding the uh, comps that are in the neighborhood, uh, understanding the current market condition. You may even have to justify your pricing decision by using this data. Remember, you got to confidently communicate your pricing strategy, providing clients with a clear rationale on that suggested price. The third type would be negotiation questions, like how flexible is the seller? What are the common points that we can negotiate? So negotiation questions involves preparing clients for a give and take. All right, I want to take a sidebar right here because negotiation, I hear a lot of agents and this just bugs the crap out of me. So I'm going to get out my soapbox right here and uh, get on my soapbox. Negotiation, I hear agents all the time, well, I'm a good negotiator. You just heard me say that negotiation prepares the clients for the give and take. Dude, negotiation is a give and take. You've got to give up something to get something. What I dislike is when a buyer comes in and wants everything at a lower price. That's not negotiating. That's haggling. You know, there is a difference. Haggling is I just want you to give me that or all of that or whatever you said you would give me just at a lower price. Negotiation would involve, okay, look, I want to knock $20,000 off, but I'll give you post-closing possession. That is a no negotiation technique. You're giving something and getting something. As you guys need to guide your client on these negotiation strategies. There's going to be potential compromises, uh, things like that. So you must understand and maintain an assertiveness while maintaining a collaborative approach so that both parties can end up feeling like they won. All right. We always hear the win-win negotiation. That's what you want both parties to feel like. All right. Number four would be legal questions or contractual qu questions, like what are the terms of the purchase agreement? Can you explain a contingency or what does that mean? So first things first, one, unless you are practicing attorney, remember, don't give legal advice. You may be able to talk about our contract or the contract you're using because you're very familiar with that contract. But always remember that you are not a practicing attorney unless you are. And if you are not, I always try and tell people, hey, I'm not a practicing attorney, but here's what I think. All right. You got to have a solid understanding of your local real estate laws. And they do differ. Virginia is different than Kansas laws, than Indiana and Florida laws. Very similar, but there's a few things. So make sure you understand your local real estate laws so that you can clearly and accurately help navigate that client through this process. You must also continually emphasize the importance of remaining legal and compliant 
to help build that trust with your clients. All right. Number five, timeline questions. Like your client's going to say, how long does it take to typically close? What in factors, what factors can influence the closing? So timeline questions involve you managing your client's expectations. You should provide a realistic timeline and consider factors such as market condition, consider financing, consider inspection timeframes or appraisal timeframes. You must maintain a proactive communication to keep your client informed about all of these stages during this time frame or any potential delays that are coming back. You must maintain transparent, and I'm going to add a word here, not in my notes, that is constant contact to help manage your client's expectation. You guys know the number one reason most agents get fired? It's lack of communication, all right? Now, I understand I've been on both sides of this table. I've been buyer's agents and uh, listing agents for a long, long time. I have bought and sold houses for my personal use and for investment. So I've been at both sides of the table, meaning the client and, and the agent. You guys need to make sure you maintain contact, dude. Even if you do not have anything to tell them, I would suggest you call your client and go, hey, it's Friday. I'm calling you to let you know, I don't have anything new to tell you, but I just want you were on my mind. So I thought I'd reach out to you and let you know that we're still in the same spot we were last week. What happens with us is we assume that they understand the process. And I hear a lot of agents say, well, if I had something to tell them, I'd call them. Yeah, but they don't know that. They don't know the process. You may be sitting here going, oh, well, it's, 20 days to get title work. I know that. I've been doing it 10 years. So you don't call your client. No, they don't know it's 20 days. They just think, hey, my agent's forgotten me. I don't know what's going on. I haven't, he, I haven't heard from him. He's ghosted me. So please, when it comes to the timeline kind of concept and you lay out these timelines, make sure you communicate it and keep track of it and keep contact with them, all right? Uh, there's gonna be a lot of financing questions. What are my mortgage options? How can I prove my credit score? Now understand, we may not have the answers to these, but you have built this trust with this client, you have created this rapport, so they're going to ask you these questions. Financing, uh, questions are going to require that you have some very basic and maybe a little bit of advanced knowledge on some of the mortgage options that are out there and the entire process. Guiding your client to improving their financial position enhances your ability to gain favor with them. And it may be entirely that your job is to just kind of hold their hand while they're talking with an MLO. Remember, you wanted to build this br bridge of trust and dependability. Now you've got to work it, even if it's really not in your area like this. There's going to be uh, community questions, those kind of stuff. Um, tell me about the local schools and amenities, things of that nature. You have got to make sure that you understand the nature of those uh things that you're going to talk about. There's going to be future market predictions. Do you anticipate property values increasing or decreasing? Predicting future market trends requires us to stay informed about the economic indicators. Um, other factors, there could be development plans around. All of these things are going to have to be known by you, providing a well reasoned insight to help your client into understanding the market trends and making so that they can make informed predictions, once again, is going to enhance your credibility and help further build that bridge of trust.
there's going to be property inspection questions. You know, uh, I don't understand this inspection report. What are the findings? What repairs do I have to make? What repairs don't I have to make? So you're going to have to interpret the inspection reports pretty accurately. You're going to have to identify potential issues. You're going to help them communicate openly to the other side about the property. You're going to address these inspection and condition questions that may involve you working with another third party, like an inspector or a repairman or any other person that could be identified in the report. You've got to guide your clients to the necessary repairs and improvements. Now, the last one is going to be a risk mitigation. What protections do I have if this deal falls through? How can we address the potential appraisal issues? Risk mitigation involves ensuring clients about potential challenges and outlining the strategies to minimize those risks. A key point is being proactive in your risk management. You guys as seasoned professionals must anticipate the potential problems and have a strategy in place to mitigate that problem. Providing guidance to your client on these issues, such as the financing hurdle. You know, there's going to be maybe inspection concerns. There could be legal complications. This is going to build that trust that you want to build. And when you can solve these risk issues, <laughs> and guess what? If you can solve them before they even come up, that's going to make you even more credible in the eyes of your client. And every time that you can make yourself more credible, it enhances your potential on the next issue you've got to deal with. You know, if, if you've got your client saying, well, he told me there's going to could be this problem and it popped up, but he already had an answer for us and we solved it very quickly. Now, when it comes time for you to give them more advice, they're going to be more prone to listening to you. So make sure that you understand all of these 10 types of questions so that you can help your client out and ensure a smooth and successful transaction.